We don't need no education. Yes, you do. You've just used a double negative. <laughs> This is Americanitis, episode 34, August 8th, 2020. I'm your host, Daniel Sagner. This podcast contains harsh language and covers adult topics. You'll be challenged by views with which you do not agree. We may not be politically correct, but we are correct about politics. Never think of pain or danger or enemies a moment longer than is necessary to fight them. I was reminded of this quote while I was thinking about why exactly I felt the need to take a break from this podcast. Constantly staring into the terrible abyss of our social landscape can be depressing. It left me wondering if I was living my best life while I was constantly looking at things that I despise. After all, if my philosophy teaches anything, it's that the point of ethics is how you live in this world, not worrying about what others are doing. And yet, I find myself thinking of my enemies a great deal of late. I find myself thinking that if I don't stand up and defend what I know to be true, then what right have I to complain? The world is in desperate need of rational voices. You may well call me a fool but I think that some of the values that make Western civilization great are capable of being saved. I think that's something worth fighting for. I'd like my kids to have a fighting chance. All that is required for evil to prevail, after all, is for good men to do nothing. So, who are my enemies this week? Unsurprisingly, teachers unions. Teachers unions in L.A. County have gone on strike. They refuse to go back to work until their demands are met. Let's take these demands one at a time. Ahem. An immediate moratorium on charter schools in Los Angeles. I mean, this one's pretty transparent. This is just competition crushing. This is using the government gun, using force to stop new charter schools or existing charter schools from even existing. I mean, geez, charter schools might open and kids might go there instead. They need to have control. They need to have the power. They need to make sure that they have a monopoly on whether or not your kids get an education. They also demand the passage of Medicare for all. <laughs> well, I mean, this one's just virtue signaling. LA doesn't have any ability to make this happen. So the next one is uh, new state level wealth taxes in California. Wow, what a fantastic way to destroy your state in one go. It's like they have this notion that all of these ooh, scary wealthy people have this big vault full of gold coins like Scrooge McDuck that they can just go fucking diving into. Like, it's not like that. It, th these people have their money tied up in things, physical things out in the world like warehouses and stock and actual buildings, real estate. If you want to tax somebody based on their wealth, they're going to have to liquidate some of that, which means fewer things out on the market for you to buy. Who is this benefiting to take money from those who have earned it and give it to the state so that they can redistribute it how they see fit? Yeah, it doesn't seem like pressure group politics at all. A national ban on evictions. I fail to see how this is related to schooling. Uh, maybe just more virtue signaling. An end to voucher programs. You see, voucher programs allow families to have more choice, more flexibility about where they send their kids to school. Since you're already paying into the system, the state, in their great wisdom, allows uh, you to present a voucher to pay for some of a private school's costs. Once again, this is just using the government gun to crush the competition. Don't give people choices. They have to deal with us. The abolition of standardized testing. You know, actually, I don't have a huge problem with this one, actually. While I do believe that we need a metric by which prospective universities can judge applicants, I am certain that the free market can address those concerns better than the state. A massive infusion of federal money to bail out the Los Angeles Unified School District. 
Ah, there it is, the real money shot. Looks like the LAUSD is broke. They can't fund their pensions. Aw, what a shame. I still fail to see how this is my problem. They can't manage their money, so I'm on the hook. Remember, federal means that we all pay. So, obviously, I find this entire list outrageous and worthy of the highest levels of scorn, derision, and mockery. Their justification for all of this is that they don't want to risk exposure to this virus that's been going around. I don't know if you've heard of it. We call it the COVID. Yeah, this thing's super deadly. So much that if you're under the age of 65, you're three times more likely to die in a car accident than from COVID. And if you're of school age, you're more likely to be struck by lightning twice. So, obviously, we should all be freaking out, right? shutting down the whole economy, and these teachers can then use it as leverage to get some sweet government cash. This is not just LA, mind you. Teachers unions all over are refusing to go back to work, but of course they still get paid. But hey, California gonna call me, right? This is the way they think, and I'm not surprised by any of it. So why do I bring it up? Because there's a larger issue at play. It may surprise you to know that while I am an extremist for capitalism, I have no problem with unions. As a matter of fact, it is because I am a capitalist that I think unions are just fine. Today, the government grants favors to unions and uses force to coerce businesses into dealing with union demands. But that isn't the union's fault. The unions are just using the tools provided. These tools should not be left out to play with. The state should have no ability to interfere with unions or businesses. But that's enough fodder for a whole cast. The problem is not with unions per se but with public sector unions. The fact that we have a public sector in teaching is already a bridge too far. No teacher should be an employee of the state. The private sector would handle education better and with less expense and waste and deliver better results. How do I know this? How can I say these things with such assuredness and certainty? Because I have eyes and I can use my mind. I can look at every area of the economy where the government has little influence and I can watch them bloom. I can look at heavily regulated sectors and watch them begrudgingly inch forward or actually regress. But again, this is not the point I wish to make. Why are public sector unions in particular so bad? What makes them reprehensible? Let's break this down. You go to your job and your boss pays you $100 for easy math. I know some of you went to public school like me, but try to keep up anyway. Okay, so you have $100, right? Wrong! You have $60! How did this happen? I was looking forward to that crisp C-note. Well, the government has various taxes that it takes out of your payment. I know that schools are usually funded by the equally vicious and immoral property tax, but let's keep pretending, shall we? These taxes go towards everything, including Social Security, Medicare, keeping your local mayoral mansion's lawn cut, you know, the basics. The question is, of course, by what right? I earned my money. I entered into a contract with my employer and he agreed to pay me a certain sum for my work. Then someone with a gun steps in between us and demands 40%. How is this fair? How is my labor their property? Do I not work for myself? Do I not have a right to the fruits of my labor? Of course I do, and of course they have no right. Taxation is theft. Plain and simple theft. Your earnings have been taken from you by force. It is immoral. Now, with that established, we can see that public school teachers are paid via taxation. They are employed by the state. In normal unions, if the employees have demands, they bring them to the people who employ and pay them, to their boss. But not so in the public sector. The teachers strike against the people. They hold them hostage. The state has created a near monopoly in education and deemed the teachers public servants. So the teachers strike and do not harm the state, their employers, but the local populace. Let's say they are striking because they don't get paid well enough. Instead of insisting that the state free up the market so that they can earn a higher wage ethically, 
They instead demand higher wages from the state. The state, of course, will capitulate because it's easy to spend other people's money. They can just raise the taxes a little bit, boil the frog a little more. The people can handle it. And after all, the teachers need it. And after all, it's for the kids. So they steal a little bit more from you to satisfy the teachers, or the firefighters, or the police, or the garbage collectors, or the letter carriers, or the town clerks. This is what makes the public sector unions uniquely evil. The state uses force to monopolize a sector. Then, those employees deprive you of services until the state agrees to steal more of your money. The immediate solution is to disband all public sector unions and outlaw them. The permanent solution is the free market, capitalism. But I hear you saying, but Dan, the teachers aren't squawking about pay increases, they're worried about catching the COVID. I call bullshit. Either these teachers associations are using a crisis to get what they want, or they are yellow-bellied pusillanimous morons. Here's a tweet I ran across that illustrates the point nicely. Hey teachers, I saw the dentist and hygienist today, went to the bank, pharmacy, and the hardware store, getting a haircut tomorrow, going out to eat Friday, going grocery shopping on Saturday for my elderly parents, a lot of people working, when are y'all going back to work? Yeah. What makes you so fucking special? Hell, I've been at work since this thing began, and I just work on servers. You work on children's minds. That's incredibly important, leave alone the fact that I think you do a shitty job in general and that you couldn't find employment on the free market. You'd think that your job counts as essential, right? I mean, hell, Trump forced meat packers back to work. Remember that? My favorite line out of this display of absolute disdain for the public was, We're not babysitters. We're not going to watch your kids just so the economy can get better. Well, two things. No one said you were. You are supposed to be teaching, which I was told is a very important job. So important that the state needs to control it and provide it. Now you're reducing it to babysitting. Do you take your job very seriously? And where do you think your salary comes from? If you have half the workforce out of commission, you better be ready to downsize, sister. And another thing, I hate to break it to you, but if you teach K through five, you are abso-fucking-lutely a babysitter. 100% without a doubt, you are babysitting these kids. Anything you do beyond that is just, just super great. Though look, Timmy can Add two and two, isn't that special? But he didn't come home with paste in his ear today, so the teacher did their job. I wish the job was more glamorous, but the continuous lowering of standards and the state takeover of education means that you are an overpaid nanny and you fucking know it. Okay, maybe that was some overreaching. Maybe I'm bitter because I'm a parent and I'm seeing these things in my own kid's life every year. Maybe it's because I was in public education and like many, I saw its complete incompetence and stagnation for myself. Maybe I'm too close to the subject. I know that there are good teachers out there. I had a couple. And I get frustrated because I can see with luminous clarity that they could do so much better if it weren't for unions and state intervention and John goddamn Dewey. I wish we had an environment where these individuals could rise and be rewarded and the bad apples I mentioned above could be weeded out and could find better suited employment like ditch digging. So maybe this is our chance to take education back for ourselves. Homeschool, charter schools, private schools, if you can afford them after paying for everyone else's kids' education. Screw these clowns and their faux outrage. Maybe we shouldn't invite them back into our schools. Got our topic or feedback? The podcast is at Americanitis Tech. You can also follow me at, at Dan Seg. My last name is spelled Sierra Alpha Golf, November Echo Romeo. Please subscribe via Apple Podcasts or Google Podcasts. If podcasts are your thing, I'm also on YouTube, so remember to annihilate that subscribe button. Patronize us at patreon.com slash techside. Show notes are at techside.net slash Americanitis. Theme music by Eddie. I thank you all for listening. Later days.